In the late 1990s, wrestling fans witnessed an incredible shift in the industry. The Attitude Era was a huge departure from the WWF's previous family-friendly programming. Society was changing and for the WWF it was either modernise or face the threat of extinction. But the transformation wasn't just in response to the changing times, but also as a countermeasure to WCW, who had found incredible success in promoting the New World Order. In 1997, the WWF responded with their own brand of gang warfare, and for a few years, the Federation was dominated by factions. Each of these factions was unique and had their own agendas, from DX to the right to censor. These groups were part of what made the Attitude Era so special. Today, we're taking a closer look, in no particular order, at the top 10 factions of the Attitude Era. In the mid-1980s, the landscape of tag team wrestling changed forever with the emergence of the original Hart Foundation. Manager Jimmy Hart introduced Bret Hart and Jim Neidhart to the WWF and the duo combined technical skill with raw power. It wasn't long before the Hart Foundation captured the Tag Team Championship. As the 1980s became the 1990s, Bret Hart emerged as the company's number one hero and WWF champion. But as the 90s wore on, Bret's babyface character was becoming stale and in need of a refresh. And so, Bret's evolution emerged in 1997. He turned heel and reintroduced the Hart Foundation, expanding it from a tag team into a faction. Alongside him stood Hart family members and allies like the British Bulldog, Owen Hart, Brian Pillman and Jim Neidhart. In the US they were heels with a strong anti-American stance, but in Canada and elsewhere in the world they were celebrated as heroes. This created a compelling and unique dynamic on WWF TV. It gelled really well with the new ethos of the Attitude Era. However, the faction began to unravel as 1997 went on. Brian Pillman's sudden and tragic death in October left a void, and then Brett was already on track to leave the WWF to join WCW, and the Montreal Screwjob happened. And so, that was the end of the Hart Foundation, but their short run at the start of the Attitude Era in 1997 was hugely entertaining. The Attitude Era was full of intensity, drama and edginess, but even on the most chaotic episode of Smackdown, there was always time for a dance break. Too Cool and Rikishi were there to provide just that. Too Cool, initially known as Too Much, consisted of Scott Taylor, aka Scotty Too Hotty, and Brian Christopher, aka Grandmaster Sexa. While both Taylor and Christopher initially embarked on their WWF journey with distinct personas, it was their reinvention as Too Cool that they're truly remembered for. Enter Rikishi. He was a veteran in the WWF, having taken on various gimmicks over the years, from being a part of the Head Shrinkers to portraying the Sultan. But it was his transformation into Rikishi, the fun-loving, dancing Samoan, that made him a legend. Their matches often ended with dance-offs, which provided both athleticism and entertainment, and it was always great to see someone from outside the team dancing along with them. Rikishi's hilarious and disgusting signature move, the stink face, was as over as the people's elbow in the year 2000. Eventually, Rikishi turned heel and split from the group. He actually went mad and ran over Steve Austin at one point. For Scotty Too Hotty and Grandmaster Sexe, they couldn't recreate the magic without Rikishi dancing by their side. By late 1999, it was clear that WCW was in a downward spiral thanks to years of mismanagement. The WWF were absolutely destroying WCW, both creatively and in the Monday Night ratings battle. Throughout the Monday Night War, many wrestlers had defected to and from either promotion, but never in such a number as the Radicals. 
Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Perry Saturn and Dean Malenko. These four men were sick and tired of WCW's glass ceiling. Because the usual suspects were holding talent down over in WCW, which was leading to massive frustrations amongst a lot of the talent. And these men were talented. They were some of the best wrestlers in the world. The WWF leaned into the real world narrative of their WCW departure. They showcased the radicals as disgruntled wrestlers from the other company, looking to prove themselves on the big stage. The radicals aligned themselves with Triple H and the McMahon Helmsley regime. This cemented their heel status from the get-go. The technical skills they brought to the ring was immense. Instead of having boring day jobs like in the new generation, the superstars of the late 90s were pimps, porn stars and vampires. From their iconic entrance where they rose up through a ring of fire, this trio were less like traditional wrestlers and more like creatures of the night. Movies like Interview with the Vampire and Blade had made vampires cool again, and the WWF really did sink their teeth into presenting their own version of the mythical creatures. The brood comprised of Gangrel, Edge and Christian. They wore gothic clothing and had fanged teeth. Gangrel was the central figure of the faction. You knew he was serious because he carried around a chalice full of blood. He guided the two newcomers, Edge and Christian, as they made their first ever mark on the WWF. Beyond the theatrics, it was really obvious that Edge and Christian were exceptionally talented wrestlers. Their blend of high-flying moves and tag team offense hinted at the future tag team legends that they would become. During the outrageous storylines of the Attitude Era, the right to censor initially seemed out of place, but in fact it was a really clever idea. The right to censor had a clean-cut appearance with their white shirts, their neckties and their slacks, and it was actually a parody of a pressure group called the Parent Television Council. The PTC were taking issue with the WWF's risky content at the time, Various wrestlers underwent radical transformations in order to join the right to censor. The Godfather was a fun-loving pimp surrounded by his hoe train. He epitomised the very essence of the Attitude Era's edginess and the fans really loved him for it. And so it was even more shocking when he transformed into the Good Father, which was a completely stark departure from the way we knew him before. He got rid of his colourful clothes and he fired his hose and he was reborn as a reformed character. Val Venus was another changed man as he denounced his past as an adult film star, trading his signature white towel for a crisp white shirt. Ivory, Bull Buchanan and Stephen Richards joined the group, with Richards becoming the faction's self-righteous leader. With a zealous drive, they sought to sanitise the WWF, clashing with anyone on the show that they deemed to be offensive. The Nation of Domination were memorable from the moment they made their entrance. It was a militant march to the ring with a fist raised in salute. The faction was initially conceived as a nod to the Black Power and Nation of Islam movements of the 60s and 70s. They tackled themes of racial tension and social injustice, which was an edgy move in the world of wrestling in the late 90s. But what it really proved was how far the WWF had moved on from the cartoon era of the new generation just a couple of years before. Led by Farouk, the group saw many different members throughout its existence, including young Rocky Maivia. The Rock's inclusion in the nation proved an important role for his evolution from a smiling babyface into a brash, confident heel. He took over the group from Farouk and that marked the true beginning of his meteoric rise to the top of the industry. Other members like D'Lo Brown, Mark Henry and Owen the Black Heart also found success inside the faction. The Attitude Era didn't just push the envelope in terms of mature content, 
it also blurred the lines between fiction and reality. Take the Job Squad, for example. Their very name was a nod to the term jobber, and their slogan was, Pin me, pay me, which further drove the point home. The joke was that each member of the group was destined to only ever reach the level of enhancement talent for various reasons. Al Snow was notorious for his many attempts to break out with different gimmicks, from Avatar to Leaf Cassidy, but he just couldn't get over with the fans. Bob Holly often found himself in the mid-card and being known as Sparky Plug back in the day didn't really help. Flash Funk showcased remarkable agility in the ring and yet he struggled to make an impact with the fans. Goldberg's entire act as a parody of WCW's Goldberg was built on the joke of being a perpetual loser and God knows what the Blue Meanie was supposed to be. But the Job Squad was more than just a group of losers. They were a symbol of changing times in the WWF. Now, the company was willing to be self-referential and use insider terminology on its own TV shows. As the new generation ended and the Attitude Era began, Vince McMahon transformed from a neutral commentator to the monstrous boss of the WWF. McMahon was now one of the company's most hated heels and he wanted total control of the Federation at any cost. In the corporation, McMahon surrounded himself with both his family and like-minded corporate stooges. The Rock's shocking alliance with the corporation was one of the most defining moments of the era. The People's Champion became the Corporate Champion, and supporting Mr McMahon was his son Shane. Together, they orchestrated countless plots to derail their opponents, often using the corporation's muscle to impose their will. The corporation was also a backdrop to the incredible Mr. McMahon vs. Stone Cold storyline that was so hot at the time. By 1998, The Undertaker had already cemented his legacy as the dead man, but he became extra spooky when he turned heel and introduced the Ministry of Darkness. The Undertaker said that a plague of evil would be unleashed on the World Wrestling Federation, to begin with, the Ministry of Darkness was just made up of The Undertaker and Paul Bearer, and he was also joined by Farouk, Bradshaw, Viscera, Midian, Gangrel, Edge and Christian at various points during 1999. The faction engaged in some of the Attitude Era's most extreme storylines, including abductions, a crucifixion and even an attempt to marry Stephanie McMahon against her will. It was all part of The Undertaker's grand scheme to take over the WWF. At one point, The Undertaker revealed that his ministry actually took orders from a greater power who apparently owned the key to McMahon's heart and soul. In the end, the corporation and the ministry joined forces to become the corporate ministry and McMahon himself was revealed to have been the higher power all along. Quite frankly, it was all batshit crazy stuff. If you ask most wrestling fans to name a faction from the Attitude Era, they would probably say DX, but before there was DX, there was the Click. The Click were a backstage group consisting of Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall and Shawn Waltman aka X-Pac. Their real life influence behind the scenes was notorious. During the mid-90s they politicked to get themselves pushed at the detriment to all of the other wrestlers in the locker room. Their iron grip on the WWF came to an end when Scott Hall and Kevin Nash defected to WCW in 1996. In WCW, those guys formed the NWO, a faction that ended up changing the course of wrestling history. But the WWF's answer to the NWO was DX. Formed by Shawn Michaels, Triple H and China, DX became the WWF's embodiment of its newfound attitude. They started out as a heel faction, but between their parodies, their lewd gestures and their infamous invasion of WCW, fans couldn't help but to end up loving them. When Shawn Michaels stepped away from the WWF after WrestleMania 14, 
Triple H took the reins as leader and he developed the group further by recruiting the New Age Outlaws and X-Pac. As the Attitude Era started to wind down, each of DX's members started going their own separate ways. DX went through various incarnations and reunions over the years, but they will always be most remembered for their boundary-pushing antics during the Attitude Era.